28. I'm sorry, but we need to postpone this meeting until Friday. Put. I apologize, but this meeting until Friday. Step 1. Read the two sentences and the word given. Which words in the second sentence also belong to the first sentence? I apologize has the same meaning, but this meeting until Friday. Words we have left to modify. We need to postpone. Step 2. Grammar analysis. Is the first sentence positive or negative? Is it present, past or future? The first sentence is in the present simple. We need and positive. There is no negative adverbs. Not. No. I apologize is the first clause. The second clause is about to follow. So we require subject plus verb plus object. How about selecting the only subject from the words we need to modify? The subject must be followed by a verb, an auxiliary verb that is. Why you ask? Because the word given, put, is an ordinary verb and requires an auxiliary or helping verb to help it. Use the auxiliary verb within the words needing to be modified. Need is an auxiliary that, alongside dare to and ought to, must be followed by the infinitive to. To is also in the list of words we need to modify. As you have the auxiliary verb, and we now know that auxiliary verbs help ordinary verbs, then an ordinary verb is what must come next. That verb obviously being the word given, put. The last word we have left to modify is postpone. This is the tricky part. Obviously, you cannot use postpone, so we need to form a phrasal verb with the same meaning. Phrasal verbs are composed of a verb and an adverb or preposition. We already have the verb put, yet it still needs to be followed by either a preposition or an adverb to make it complete with the sense of postpone or delay. With idiomatic phrasal verbs, you've got to learn them by heart. We'll give you some clues, e.g. I had to put our date. Please, don't put your exams. This phrasal verb can be divided. Off. Twenty-nine. Peter, did you receive the email that I sent you? Got. Peter was the email that was sent to him. Step 1. Read the two sentences and the word given. Which words in the second sentence also belong to the first sentence? Peter, the, email, that, sent, him. Words we have left to modify. Did, you, receive. Step 2. Grammar analysis. Is the first sentence positive or negative? Is it present, past, or future? Typical word order equals subject plus verb plus object. Peter is the subject. Was is the verb, auxiliary verb, and will need to be accompanied by a normal verb. Given that the first sentence uses the form did, we know it's in the past. Given that the first sentence uses an interrogative mark, we know it's a question. So which verb signifies that a question is being asked? Asked. Peter was asked is the first clause. 
The first sentence uses direct speech, but the second sentence is reporting what was asked in the first sentence. This is called reported speech or indirect speech. Get is the word given and word that has six different meanings in English. In the words given, we have the subject, you. As this is reported speech, the subject is now in third person singular, so you'll need the adequate subject pronoun. The last word we have left is receive. First rule of get equals get plus noun or pronoun equals receive or obtain, i.e. she got an email from Joseph. I want to get a coffee. Insert the word given, which is the past simple and past participle of the infinitive, get. Thirty. I heard that Mike had rejected the offer to work overseas due to his family commitments. Turn. I was told that Mike, the offer for overseas work due to his family commitments. Step one. Read the two sentences and the word given. Which words in the second sentence also belong to the first sentence. I, that, Mike, the, offer, work, overseas, do, to, his, family, commitments. Words we have left to modify. Had, rejected. Step two, grammar analysis. Is the first sentence positive or negative? Is it present, past, or future? The first sentence uses had plus past participle, which is the past perfect. You will need to apply the same in the second sentence. You can just use had from the list of words to modify. Turn is a verb, but we are going to need a verb that has the same meaning as reject from the first sentence. Turn in itself doesn't mean reject, but if you add a preposition or adverb to it, then you can change the meaning entirely. These are called phrasal verbs. Phrasal verbs are quite difficult because aside from the literal ones, there's a lot of idiomatic ones. In this case, you should be able to infer the meaning. You need an adverb that means in a descending direction, i.e. I was feeling tired, so I turned his invitation. Double check your answer. Is the second sentence the same as the first sentence? Have you used up all the words you need to modify?